If you're a fan of Joe Shows High, you may have seen some videos we shot in the past how to use distilled white vinegar around the house and yard, including how to make a really effective weed killer. Well, today I'm gonna to show you six ways, six different ways to use white vinegar, starting with to clean produce of all pesticides and dirt, how to deep clean a dishwasher, how to remove tarnish from copper pots and pans, how to sanitize a sink, how to clean shower walls. But we're gonna start with removing rust from tools. Okay, you start by laying on an old towel, or any piece of cloth. An old towel works great because the terry cloth is nice and thick. What you wanna do is wrap up the blade of the shovel, the rusty blade of the shovel, and wrap it up in this towel. Secure the towel to the shovel with just a piece of wire or something, just to hold it in place. There you go, something like that. Now, take a bucket. This has to be like a five gallon bucket. Line it with a plastic trash bag. Put the shovel in there. Beautiful, just like that. And now what you want to do is pour white vinegar in there and soak the towel. So now the towel is soaked in vinegar, completely saturated, and it's holding that vinegar against the rusty blade. And that's what's going to cut through that rust. It's only 5% acidic, but you'd be surprised. It's, it's really pretty effective at cutting through rust. Now, I suppose you could just fill the bucket with vinegar, not use the towel, but imagine how much vinegar. It'd be like two gallons of vinegar. This is... I use about a quart, less than a quart. So you can see it's much more economical this way. Okay, so anyway, once you get the towel soaked in vinegar, close the bag, put a twist tie around it just to hold in all that goodness. All right, now you're gonna set it aside. Now how long must you wait? Well, for a rusty shovel like this, at least 16, maybe 18 hours. If it was a smaller piece that wasn't quite as rusted, maybe you could just do it overnight. Um, but anyway, so we're going to let that set. Now, since I'm sure you have no desire to spend the next 18 hours with me, I decided to skip ahead. And I have another rusty tool that has been soaking in vinegar for about 24 hours or so. It's an old pair of garden shears. What I did is I just soaked one blade so you can see the difference between the cleaner one and the old one. Okay, so let me take this off. Again, you gotta just twist, a little twist tie just to hold that on there. Whoa, look at that. This is without even touch, that's just the rust coming right off, just from it sitting in vinegar. Look at that, isn't that amazing? So here's the old blade. You see how rusted it was. Look at that. So at this stage, what we want to do is wipe off as much of the dissolved rust as possible. Sprinkle on a little baking soda. Baking soda is very fine, but it is an abrasive. Believe it or not, that is that'll work to get rid of any residual rust. This actually came out pretty clean, so you might not really even need to do this. Look at that. After just a few seconds. That is down to bare clean metal. Now at this point, you want to wipe it dry, which is important. You don't want to leave it wet, of course, because it might rust again. Then give it a liberal coating of silicone spray. You wouldn't think it would be necessary to clean your dishwasher, but you would be wrong because food scraps, soap scum, and grease can eventually clog up the drain line and cause some pretty funky odors. So here are three ways to deep clean your dishwasher without using any harsh chemicals. <laughs> okay, first step is remove the bottom rack from the dishwasher. If you look in the bottom, here's a spray arm. You wanna make sure that's spinning freely. There's a filter system. I'm not sure you're aware of this, but every dishwasher has a filter system and it's locked in place. We're going to rotate it and pull it out. Every dishwasher has a slightly different system. It will. Um, and then underneath that, there's a screen that can pop out. Now, I cleaned this not too long ago, so it, it's actually in pretty good shape. What we're trying to do is soak it in some warm water and then just use a soft bristle brush. This is a brush I use for cleaning vegetables. And you just want to clear out any debris. This has a really fine um, fabric filter, so you want to be careful with that. But if it's really caked down, if you haven't cleaned it for a while, and it's caked down with food scraps or whatever, um, you can soak it overnight in a solution of 50-50 white vinegar and water. But again, if you clean this every two or three months, it should be fine. 
So then you put this, put the filter back in there once everything is clean. So make sure it's snapped in place. Put in the primary filter. So once you have it in there, pull on it, make sure it doesn't come off. All right, so that's locked in. So that's the first step. Next, what you want to do is get one cup of distilled white vinegar and put it in a Pyrex or a measuring cup or a glass bowl or something like that and set it in the middle of the top rack. Then close the door or run a full cycle of hot water only. No dishes, no nothing, just the vinegar. And the hot water and the vinegar will create a steam that will clean the entire interior of the dishwasher. So once you're done with that, then what you want to do is take one cup of baking soda and sprinkle it in the bottom of the dishwasher. This is, this is why it's easier to do this with the bottom rack out. But you just want to sprinkle it all around, a full cup too. Close the door. Again, you could put the bottom rack back in, but close the door. And run a hot water only cycle, no dishes, no nothing, just the hot water. And you're going to run that full cycle and that baking soda is going to clean whatever's left in this dishwasher. It's going to clean that drain light and get rid of any funky odors. Most home cooks love copper clad cookware because the copper transfers and conducts heat really well. But there is a problem with copper and that is, of course, it stains and tarnishes really easily. But there is a way to remove that tarnish and all you need is a pan that's large enough to hold the copper clad cookware. And you're gonna to add to that about a half an inch of distilled white vinegar. All right, so just pour in enough, just perfect. That's just what we have in there. Half an inch, and then you're gonna sprinkle in some salt. Now how much salt? Let's say that much salt, whatever that is. Look, maybe an eighth of a cup or so. And then you're going to turn on the heat and bring that to a boil. So we're going to wait till that's just at the point of boiling. I'll be right back. It's just at the point of boiling, so I'm going to turn it off. Mix it around a little bit carefully just to dissolve the last bit of that salt. Take the tea kettle and just set it right in there. Now I, I partially filled the tea kettle with water just as ballast so it doesn't float. So you want to make sure it's sitting right down at the bottom. And now we just yeah, gonna wait a good six or eight minutes, 10 minutes, depending on how badly tarnished. This was pretty badly tarnished, so it might take a full 10 minutes or more. So I'll be back. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, 10 minutes or so. Well, that's pretty good, right? You see that, that's without touching it. That's just from it soaking. It's gotten rid of probably 80 or 90% of it. You see the copper showing. So now what I would do to get rid of the rest of it, sometimes you can get rid of some of that extra tarnish by just getting a sponge, dipping it into the vinegar, sprinkle on some salt to, work, to act as an abrasive, and then just scrub it. Oh, some of it's coming off. So I'd probably at this stage maybe soak it a while more. And then once it's clean, if you've gotten as clean as it can be, uh, dry it really well, and then you know, chances are you wouldn't need to, it probably won't tarnish again as quickly if you clean it before it gets to this stage, right? So if it took a year to get to that stage and maybe clean it every three or four months. And this way you won't have to spend so much work scrubbing it. But as you can see, the salt and the vinegar can cut through that tarnish pretty quickly. Sink drains often get plugged up with hair and soap scum, which over time can produce a pretty nasty odor. So here's a way to sanitize and deodorize any sink drain in just a few minutes. All you need is some baking soda and white vinegar. So let's start with about a third of a cup of baking soda. Pour it right down into the sink drain. Then you're gonna follow it up with some vinegar. One full cup of vinegar. Once this vinegar hits that baking soda, it's gonna start fizzing up. There you go, look at that action. Isn't that great? All that baking soda and vinegar is really working on whatever's in that drain. And then you're gonna follow it up with a full kettle of steaming hot boiling water. That nice hot water will cut through any soap scum and hopefully get rid of that hair. Look at that, drains really freely, smells nice and clean. So if you repeat this treatment every three or four months, you won't have to worry about any more nasty odors coming out of your sink. Now stay tuned for a bonus tip on the proper way to use a plunger to clear a clog. Shower walls and doors are notoriously difficult to keep clean, but I found a really easy way to clean them using 
a soap dispensing dish scrubber. You get these at any department store or hardware store. They're meant for cleaning dishes and they have a hollow handle that you fill up with soap, with liquid soap. And then it has, this, has a little scrubby pad on it. Really clever way to clean dishes, but it works really well on shower walls and doors. What you start with is some Dawn dish soap. I like using Dawn because it cuts through grease, but you're only gonna fill it halfway. So add Dawn to the hollow handle. It's about halfway. It's halfway because the bottom's thicker than the top. And then we're gonna to top it off with some distilled white vinegar. The combination of the acidic vinegar and the grease cutting properties of the Dawn is a surprisingly powerful cleanser. I've never found anything on the shower walls or doors that this doesn't cut through. Okay, so there we are. We have the Dawn. Actually, it looks pretty interesting. The Dawn and the vinegar. So we're gonna mix that up a little bit. There you go. And I'll show you on the inside of this glass door. I don't know if it's clear on the in the camera, but this is just streaked with, this hasn't been cleaned in a couple of weeks. Usually we clean it more regularly, but I wanted to keep it this way for the video. So what you want to do is just use this to clean off. This is a soap film and hard water deposits. I'll just do this little center section. Then follow up with a microfiber cloth, or I'm just going to use paper towel. What do you think? Pretty cool, right? Hey, Will. How are you, baby? You want some strawberries? Is that what you came over here for some berries? You have to wait. I have to clean them first, okay? Wait. They say that all produce, vegetables, and fruit should be washed thoroughly before you consume them. But just, I know, I feel the same way. But, uh, just rinsing them in water is not good enough. It's not going to remove all the dirt, and it's certainly not going to remove any pesticides. So here's the proper way to clean produce. First, get a bowl and dump in your produce, in this case, strawberries. By the way, they say berries, strawberries in particular, have the most pesticides on them. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they say. And we're going to fill it up with water, just enough to submerge the berries. There you go. All right. So now we're going to add half a cup distilled white vinegar. This is just regular white vinegar, about 5% acidic. Put that in there. Mix it around a little bit. And then you're going to follow up with a quarter cup of baking soda. Now just be prepared. There is a definite reaction when the baking soda hits vinegar. Look at that. How cool is that? It's like a science experiment, right? So you let that fizz up. So you have all the action of the vinegar and the baking soda working on the, on the berries. There you go, settles right down. Now, you're supposed to leave this soak for like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'll just speed it up a little bit. And what you do next is you rinse off the berries. Usually, I would just take this and pour it right through a colander or a strainer. But I'm going to do it by hand because I want to show you what's left behind. So look at that. This is what was left in that container. Look at the dirt. So once you get the berries out of the vinegar, water, you want to rinse them really well and then soak them. All you should do is soak them again, get them completely soaked, and then put them through the strainer one more time. It's going to end up with is perfectly clean strawberries with all the dirt and pesticides removed. Sooner or later, every homeowner is going to have to deal with a clogged sink. And the first tool to reach for, of course, is a plunger, the plumber's best friend. Now, as simple as this tool is, there is a right and wrong way to use it. Now, what most people do is they just start plunging. But if you just start plunging like that, what you're doing if there's an overflow hole, all you're doing is sucking air in and out of that hole. So first thing you want to do is close the drain at the bottom and partially fill the sink. You want to get it filled maybe a third or half of the way. That's good enough. And then when you start plunging, hold your thumb over that overflow hole. So what you're going to do is open it. You want to go up and down two or three times before yanking it off. One, two, three, and yank it off. 
Don't just pull it off after the first time. Because what you're doing is you're going up and down. You're, you're forcing that clog out. So this is a standard sink plunger. Very affordable. You can buy them almost anywhere. They're pretty effective. But what if you own one of these? How is that going to work on a sink drain? This is a toilet plunger. But this flange actually folds in. How cool is that? So when it folds in like that, then you can use it on any sink drain. If you enjoyed this video, please support us by liking and subscribing. And I'd like to send a special shout out to our growing list of subscribers. Thank you very much. We appreciate each and every one of you.